Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris O'Brien, Associate Director of Admissions, and welcome to the fifth installment of our nine student admissions program admitted student panels talking about different aspects of life at Boston College. Uh, I'm joined by real live Boston College students that are sequestered in different areas of campus. Um, and tonight, uh, we titled this program Welcome Week to Senior Week. And it's about traditions at Boston College. Now, uh, when you were doing your search, and maybe our students will talk about it when they were doing their search as well, I think you can tell a lot about an institution by the things that mark their calendar, the, the important events, the important times of year, where school spirit or, or mission or all the things that make a particular community special and unique stand out. Uh, Boston College is no shortage of these traditions. Your high schools didn't ha have these traditions. And there were some of the days and some of the times that you look forward to the most. And you probably made great friends and had some of your fondest memories of high school right around those traditions. Well, in college, these traditions continue to exist. In fact, they will build the memories that you'll keep for a lifetime. You'll be talking about what you did at this occasion or that occasion or at that time of year in college for decades. Um, that's a cool part of our institutions. So we're gonna talk about today, maybe giving you that lens into what it's like to be a community member, what our students look forward to, understanding that the last 12 and a half months, some of these traditions took on different forms. Some of them had to be really nimble in order to keep things going while our community had to follow health and safety protocols or while we weren't able to do all the things at maximum capacity that we do. Every day things seem to get better. There's no reason uh, to believe that as we move to the fall of 2021, um, these events, these traditions, these times of year can, if not be recreated like they used to be, re-innovated. That's a word, it could be, um, to, in order to meet what we need to uh, be re required of us health and safety wise, but also meet the needs and the strengths of our community, keeping those traditions alive. We certainly hope so. So we're gonna talk about our community tonight. And I'm gonna introduce four students. Well, I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, and I'll ask them some questions as we go along. And I may have some time to answer some questions from you guys too. Feel free to use the, the Q and A um, button in order to send some questions our way. So um, I'm gonna have you guys go around and introduce yourself um, and we will, um, we will go in order uh, alphabetically of last name. So there's a lot of, there's an A right there. So that's an easy one. So, so Lauren, we'll say like who you are and where you're from and uh, what you study. People always wanna know what, what your major, what your minor and what programs you're in. And then to finish your uh, introduction, um, what I want you to talk about would be, uh, and we'll go into more depth, so you don't have to go into too much depth in your introduction, but what your favorite day at Boston College is. Like, if you know the date, that's great, but what's your favorite day at Boston College? And you can give us a little Cliff Notes version, and we may go into it later on. And then after we introduce the four of you, uh, we'll get into a little more depth of what are some of our big traditions and uh, uh, things that mark our calendar throughout the year. So, Lauren, why don't you get us started? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Lauren Appel. I'm a junior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences studying economics. I have two minors, one in history and the other one in accounting for finance and consulting and the Carroll School of Management. I'm from a northern suburb of Chicago called Long Grove. So if you're from the Midwest, shout out to you. Um, big representative here. Um, and um, my favorite day at BC is not a particular day just because it changes so much with New England weather, um, but I would have to say the first day that it's really sunny out. Um, being here for, you know, my second semester spring, um, since we got cut short last year, it's been really nice to see everyone come out um, of the classrooms and just sit on the quad. We have a lot of green space. If you visited campus before, I'm sure you'll see it. I know everything's in bloom, so it's beautiful. Um, it changes every year of kind of what day that really is, but it's pretty much any day that it's the it's 60 or six, above 65 degrees that everyone just sits outside, um, kind of relaxes from the cold, harsh New England winter um, and gets to enjoy each other. And I think that really kind of, once when you see it, you kind of know what the student body is like. Um, you see people passing, you see friends, um, and just it's a really great kind of community that's built on that day. 
And while you're talking about the, uh, the weather, Lauren, why don't you give everyone sort of your farmer's almanac weather status of Boston? Um, people from New Jersey say, what's the weather like? People from California say, what's the weather like? <laughs> you're from Chicago. What's the weather like? Be, mm -hmm. be general or specific. What should people be prepared for? Yeah, if you're coming from the Midwest or any where like farther north, um, I'd honestly say Boston is warmer than that. Um, we get a lot more snow, but it's not as freezing cold. You won't have any, you know, sub 30 degree days as you do in the Midwest. But if you're coming from California, I'd say buckle up. Um, you definitely need a big coat and some boots. Um, I think, you know, seeing the seasons change um, is one of the best parts about going to school in New England and going to school in Boston um, is you really get to see all of the seasons. So kind of how that goes for wardrobe is you need everything that you could possibly bring. I typically do like a seasonal shift. So, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, I'll go home and I'll bring back all of my winter gear um, and kind of for Easter break, then I go home and I come back with my summer stuff. So um, kind of have to flip with it. Uh, but it's really great because it makes for a lot of activities. You can go skiing, you can go hiking, you can go enjoy, um, you know, go into Boston Harbor and see the ocean. So there's really numerous things to do when you go to a school that has all four seasons. And thanks for breaking it down to like fashion. <laughs> yeah. Chopping it up into wardrobe pieces. That I, can, that I can understand. I'm sure many of the viewers can too. Good stuff. Uh, Anthony, you're next. And, and again, I want you to finish your introduction with your favorite day at Boston College. You got it. Hi, everybody. My name is Anthony Figora. I am a senior in the Cale School of Management, concentrating in finance with a minor in mathematics through the Marcy College of Arts and Science. And I'm originally from Yonkers, New York. So if we have any New Yorkers out there, um, what's up? <laughs> uh, my favorite day at BC is, uh, it's I would say, the second Thursday of classes. Um, it's the Mass of the Holy Spirit. Um, and that's a tradition that goes across every Jesuit high school, every Jesuit college and university in the United States and in the world. And it's kind of the kickstarter for the educational, uh, the, the academic year for all those, um, all those institutions. And it's my favorite day because you kind of just see everybody come together um, in prayer and just wish each other well for the rest of the year. Um, and it's something I went to a Jesuit high school too. And it was my favorite day of the year there too. Not only because you got out of class, but also because um, you kind of saw all your friends come together um, and you know, go out to O'Neill Plaza where it usually is outside or Conti Forum if it's inside this year. Um, it's in St. Ignatius Church, which is on our lower campus and that um, was due to COVID so we can all be socially distant. Um, and it's just a nice way to, to start off the year. But I I've been to that mass many times and it seems like the crowd that's at that mass, not everybody's Catholic, not everybody's religious. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like it works. And, you know, Try, try to extrapolate that out to, you know, some of the spiritual traditions there. I mean, we're a Catholic school, we're in the Jesuit tradition, we're very proud of it. But, you know, Mass of the Holy Spirit is one of these traditions that seems to be pretty inclusive. Yes, for sure. Um, and it's actually, you know, I would say a lot of my friends, Catholic and non-Catholic, all go. Um, usually whenever the, the priest goes up to preach, he kind of tries to reach out to um, the entire BC community, which is really cool. Um, gives a little bit of word of advice for the academic year, trying to prepare you mentally, uh, spiritually, um, in every facet kind of of your life to kind of get you started, get you excited to start reading books. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Well done. Yeah. Uh, okay, Abby, you're next. And again, finish your introduction with your favorite day on the BC calendar. Absolutely. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Abby Ayafola. I'm a junior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, excuse me, uh, double majoring in communication and Hispanic studies. And I'm originally from Kennebunkport, Maine. And although I've only had one of these days so far, just in terms of, you know, last year getting a little bit cut short and we didn't have it this year, but it would be Marathon Monday, which takes place in April. And I'm sure we'll get into this more when we talk about the traditions on campus. But I really love um, this day because it celebrates not only the BC community coming together, um, but also the Boston community and, you know, the world community of all the runners that come to Boston to celebrate this great course, this great city, um, the strength of our community here. And what's really unique is that BC is situated right at the uh, 21st mile. So you have about five miles after that. It's right at the end of a huge hill. And after that, it's, you know, all downhill from there. And it just really shows the pride of BC students to come together to celebrate um, before the last 
few weeks before finals and also celebrate these amazing um, accomplishments by these runners, people that you don't even know. Just, I think that speaks to kind of the type of students that go here, just really wanting to come together to celebrate whether it's a BC accomplishment or just a stranger running by, but to really cheer people on. And it's always a really fun, positive day. Well, you know, Abby, you may have two marathon Mondays in your senior year because the marathon right now is scheduled for um, uh, the second Monday of October. And then they plan for it to be run at its normal time, the third Monday of April of 22. So you might, they might make up for your last marathon Monday. So you might be able to get that. That's awesome. That would be really exciting. <laughs> uh, okay, <clears throat> last but not least, uh, Laura, again, let's hear a little bit about you and your favorite day on the BC calendar. Awesome, thank you. So hi everyone, my name is Laura. I am a senior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. I'm majoring in biochemistry and have double minors in global public health and bioinformatics. I'm also on the pre-medical track and I'm originally from Salem, New Hampshire, which is about 45 minutes north of here. Um, my favorite day is actually in the fall. It normally happens if we have a football season and that's the red bandana game. And so this is in memory of of a BC alum, Wells Crowther. He played lacrosse here and was always known to have a red bandana on him while he played. And unfortunately he passed in the tragedy of 9-11. But the reason why it's such an important day for all of us BC students is that from the very moment that you step foot on BC's campus during orientation, they do a, a presentation about um, the history of Wells Crowther and how we exemplified a big motto at BC, which is being men and women for others. And so right off the bat, that kind of shows you the importance of serving others and the Jesuit Catholic nature of BC. Um, and so this football game, just seeing all the students come out and support not only the cause, but the athletes um, and just celebrating that moment, I think has always been a really special day. I love it every year. Unfortunately, we didn't get to have it this past year, but I have my gold pass for next year. So I will be coming back for that game. Um, and yeah, it's just one of my favorite traditions and days of BC. Perfect. Thanks, Laura. <clears throat> Four great examples. But let's go back to the first tradition that you took part in, <clears throat> and that's moving in. Uh, for someone who's lived through 22 move-ins at Boston College, it is mayhem. But it's mayhem in, in a very like touching, like cool sort of way. Abby, let's go back to when you moved into Boston College. Uh, what was it like? How did it go? And what were your memories from it? Absolutely. So my move in stories are a little bit different than the norm, I would say I actually have gotten to move in a day early or more than that, um, all three years, which has definitely been very fortunate, uh, kind of beating the crowds of move-in day, but nevertheless, it was still really exciting. It's full of emotion. Um, you see all of the RAs and just Res Life staff all over the campuses um, in their bright yellow BC shirts, cheering you on as you, you know, drive in with your parents and, and just helping you get to your room. And at least freshman year, it was just so exciting and kind of daunting as someone who was a little bit nervous to leave home. But um, I lived on the Newton campus, which is our, our satellite campus just a mile and a half down the road. And it was just such an experience to really see your first dorm that you'll live in um, and kind of that shapes how the next four years will go. And, and so it, it's difficult to speak to the actual move in experience because like I said, mine was a lot smaller, um, but it was still very exciting. and. Um, once everyone moved in the next day, it was great to just meet people on your floor, uh, make chit chat in the hallway or, or just go outside and, and find groups of people just hanging out, introducing themselves and just getting to know each other. Well, one of you must have moved in on a normal day. Anthony, did you move in when you were supposed to move in? Uh, freshman year, I did. Yes. Yeah. So and you that can was... speak to the, the insanity. <laughs> I could definitely speak to the insanity. Um, and I think the cool part about freshman movement um, for me was being able to show up and um, just kind of being welcomed um, by my roommates who were already there. I knew all three of my roommates, so it wasn't really that big of a welcome, but it was still pretty cool to be able to show up um, and the three of them be there. I, I lived in a quad um, on upper campus, so not the Newton campus. Um, there's a big, you know, little fight we have going on between upper versus Newton. Everybody loves where they live. 
Um, and it was just really cool to be able to walk in. Um, the three of us all went to high school together and um, we, we took a picture um, that we took on our graduation day actually um, from senior year of high school and kind of tried to recreate that um, in our dorm room. We still have those uh, pictures today. Um, and, you know, it's just a really cool, I guess, first introduction to college. Cause um, like Abby said, like everybody's just trying to introduce themselves, get to know each other. Like we all, we're all from New York and we're like trying to bomb with all the other kids from New York on our floor. Um, and everybody who's walking past us is making fun of us for our accents and a great time. It's a great time. Um, move to the first day of class. Okay, so Laura, you're pre-med and we all know that all the horror stories that come with pre-med. So your first day at college studying pre-med, horrifying, exciting, both. How was your first day of class? You know, I would say it was horrifying in the, in the sense that I made it horrifying. I had these expectations that it was going to be the, those horror stories, you know, like everyone was already going to know all the material on the first day. Everyone was going to be overprepared. Um, I was going to be in this huge lecture hall that I knew nobody in, and I was going to be afraid to participate. So I kind of put that pressure on myself, but I would say that after that first day, I think I needed to get into the mindset of, everybody here is here to learn and to also help each other learn. So I, I usually always talk about this on a panel is that was my biggest fear coming into BC was that it was gonna be so competitive and cutthroat that I wasn't actually gonna be able to enjoy my four years. I feel like that's the environment I came in from, from high school and I, I really didn't want that to be the case and it wasn't at all. Um, I Any lectures that are bigger than a hundred people meet in discussions and some of my best friends that I've had throughout my four years have come from those. You know, even if we're struggling through organic chemistry together, that's like a time for us to bond and grow closer to one another over that long night study sessions, all of that. So um, in terms of my first day, I would say it was overwhelming just because it's a new place. It's a transition that you're not used to. But I think after that first day and kind of getting that under my belt, everything was smooth sailing for the most part from there. Um, so I would say that, yeah, it, it was both uh, overwhelming and exciting. Okay. So you did answer horrifying, just for the record. I, I just threw it out there, never thinking you were to say, because this is an admissions thing, that you're actually horrified as a freshman at first day, but you were, you were horrified. Great. I was in, like I said, like it was a very much a me thing. I feel like I put so much pressure on myself of making friends and doing so well that after that first day, I forgot about all that. All those expectations went away. Because I'm guessing you made friends and you did well. Perfect. Um, the next big thing for first year students actually has its roots over the summer, but you you sort of realize what happened, this event while you're a student um, in your freshman year, that's convocation. So Lauren, take us back to the summer before your arrival and explain sort of where the, what the genesis of convocation is and how that uh, takes place in your first uh, couple of weeks of, of Boston College. Yeah, so convocation is a tradition that BC has um, where you walk with your residence hall um, and you go down to alum or Conti Forum, which is our basketball and hockey arena. Um, so over the summer, you kind of have this speaker and you read um, a book that's kind of will relate to whoever will speak for con uh, convocation. Um, and what's really cool is kind of it comes full circle by the end of your four years as you do that same route on your way to commencement. So that's something I'm looking forward to take to do and you know next year. Um, unfortunately, my year it rained, so we weren't able to do convocation, but they still had all kind of the dinner before. So you meet with your RA and you meet with the people that live in your hall. You go to dinner together and then you kind of all just shuffled out to head down. It, it was raining. So typically we would have done the kind of parade around campus. Um, and I'm pretty sure everyone comes walking with these signs that have your residence hall name on them. And you kind of, you also, I believe set um, a fire and that's kind of the motto to go set the world aflame, which is a big motto that we have here at BC. Um, you know, basically just trying to spark joy and um, find your passion while you're here at BC and bring it with you once when you've graduated as well. Um, so then we head down to Conti Forum um, to hear our speaker. And I know last year, the, or the freshmen this year, actually got to hear Bruce Springsteen, which was really exciting. Um, 
even though it was despite it being on Zoom. I know um, my roommate, her sister is a freshman and she talked about how excited she was, read his book. Um, and, you know, it's just things like that. It kind of brings together your class and makes a special memory. So then you can look back at that when you're at your commencement um, four years later and thinking about where you've come. And, and what was the book? Um, what was your book, Lauren? Um, it was Design Your Own Life, I think. Um, and it was like a, a book that you fill out. I have it with me. I honestly, or I have it at home. I honestly don't know where I left it last. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of something that you talk about or the speaker, because it's the same person as like whoever wrote the book or the author um, will then speak about it. So it's really unique because you have that speech just for your own class, um, which I think is is nice and kind of um, starts your year off strong. And, and what was the book for the seniors? I don't know if Anthony um, has the middle one. It's a book, a something, and a backpack. I don't remember what the middle is. I don't know if it's like a bottle or something. It was like it's something like that. All right. So I see that these books have really taken hold and really. I still have mine. I, yeah. I really do. I, I treasure that. How was the speech? It was so good. I mean, we got to have ours in person, which I think um changes things but I think um yeah I still I still think about that day and how I met some of my best friends walking to that event so I, I definitely think that they do a great job of picking out the books and the speakers okay I believe you <clears throat> my favorite uh tradition of the school year happens generally the first Friday of classes and that's the student involvement fair and I probably and I didn't know it at the time, I probably saw you all there. I mean, Lauren, I probably knew before, but the rest of you, I may have met you that day. I just didn't remember or know it at the time. Um, can one of you talk about Student Involvement Fair and you know, its significance to either your life or to the, the life at Boston College? Uh, Anthony, why don't you start? Yeah, you got it. So the Student Involvement Fair is uh, when all of our over 200 clubs and organizations pack onto Stokes lawn and start throwing candy at your forehead um, to try to get you to sign up for their club. I'll never forget. I actually did sign up uh, for a club because somebody threw a Jolly Rancher at my forehead um, and ended up leaving a bruise, but uh, it is still a really good Jolly Rancher. I think it was blue raspberry. Now that I think about it, um, I enjoyed it as I was sucking on it as writing my name, I was writing my name out. Um, and that was kind of the big way for um, that clubs try to recruit, try to get all well, underclassmen and on upperclassmen to try to sign up for their clubs. Um, I signed up for a majority of my clubs that day. I think I signed up for like 15 to 20. I'm not going to lie. Um, and then I got free pizza for a good two weeks. Cause let's be honest, you only go to the first meetings to get free pizza. And then you find the clubs that you actually like. Um, and I think the two to three clubs that I kind of stuck with until senior year um, are the are two to three that I definitely signed up for that day. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely thankful for that experience because um, I, one club in particular, the Appalachian Volunteers Program, which I know Lauren also knows a lot about. Um, I signed up for that day. Um, the Appalachian Volunteers Program is a service organization on campus. Uh, we send about 500 students to the Appalachian region of the United States and beyond every spring break. Obviously, that was a little bit different this year. We did um, service in the greater Boston area, but I did sign up that day for that. And I remember uh, catching a Frisbee, and I still have that Frisbee. Um, it, it says APA on it, um, which is really cool. And um, I'm, you know, thank the, uh, I, ha I have the student involvement for the thing for that. How about someone else? To, to volunteer sort of how that student involvement fair sort of plays a role in what life is like for most students at Boston College. Yeah, I can jump in a little bit because I know that something that gets brought up a lot um, from prospective students is that we don't have Greek life on campus. So I feel like the way that people find those really strong relationships is more centered along the clubs and organizations that they join. So like Anthony said, like something like APA, my roommate did APA for three years now and some of her best friends have come from that group. So because you're meeting with them weekly and a lot of our organizations, because we are a Jesuit school focus on reflection. So there's usually some sort of component where you're talking about how your experience, whatever, if it's an academic club or if it's a service group, um, how that kind of translates into your own life and your life beyond BC and the greater community. And so I think for that reason, even though we don't have the stereotypical brothers and sisters that you might get from sororities or fraternities, um, I think that it almost is replaced by the clubs and organizations that you are involved in. Um, we do a lot of 
uh, team building outside of our meetings. So we'll go into a Boston, grab dinner sometime, or just hang out in campus. So even during this pandemic as well, I feel like that's something we've gotten a lot of great feedback from the freshmen is that having upperclassmen who are welcoming to their experience here through those clubs has really allowed them to branch out and meet new people, which I know a lot of people were worried about. So I think in that way, that's another aspect of this student involvement fair that really hits home is that you're making friends that you're gonna have for four years while at BC and beyond. Abby, are there other things? I mean, Laura just laid out a plan to network socially. Like how did, I'm assuming you've made some friends. How have you made your friends? And specifically when you're a freshman, like again, without Greek life and without rushing a sorority, like, yeah, that would be one piece that does it nicely for you. How did you get your group of friends? Absolutely. Um, I would definitely agree with that club component. I think you meet a lot of friends through the organizations in which you're involved in, but also you can meet a lot of your friends in your residence halls and in other residence halls by a lot of the programming that um, Residence Life puts on for freshmen. Um, so we have these things called hoots and howls, which are hanging out on Tuesdays or hanging out on Wednesdays late. So I personally had a howl my freshman year in my dorm. And those are just where your RA puts on some sort of an event Tuesday or Wednesday night, I think at around 10 p.m. for your floor to get together and just bond. So I've made pancakes with my floor my freshman year or painted or made like little, I don't know, like wrote letters to ourselves um, to read our senior year, things like that, where it's just a nice break from work, but also you're building community on your floor. And we would also have cross floor um, events as well. So you really just got to know the people living in your residence hall. Um, and then there was also programming to go to beyond that. Um, we also have this organization on campus called the Campus Activities Board, um, which is something that you can sign up for at the Student Involvement Fair. And they put on the most amazing programming um, for all class years, things that I'm still doing now as a junior. Like one example, they did a charcuterie board night. So now I have a BC engraved like charcuterie board um, and they provided all the cheese and, and fruit as well. So that's just one little um, anecdote of something that might be put on by CAB, but they also do a lot of programming specifically directed towards freshmen. So movie nights, um, during welcome week, they had a huge screen on one of our um, quads on campus where people got free blankets and then could sit and watch this movie. And again, you're not really watching the movie, you're chatting with all the people around you, moving around, meeting freshmen, introducing yourself. Um, so that's definitely how I made a lot of my friends. One final note is I've made friends through classes as well. Um, I'm in two majors that are more on the smaller size, um, but our average class size is around 27 students. So plenty of opportunity to meet people in your courses and grab lunch with them after or form a study group, things like that. And what's also important to note is even as a junior, I'm still making friends. And I think that's really unique about the BC community. People definitely have friends that they've had since freshman year, but you're constantly meeting people, constantly um, joining new activities or going to a new event where there's someone maybe you've seen on campus before, but never introduced yourself. And so it's never too late to continue to expand your social network here. And I think that's something very unique to Boston College. <clears throat> we'll stay on the subject for one more question and I'll ask it to Lauren. Lauren, if you want to keep the appropriate like schoolwork, life, club, sleep, balance, like what should you expect? How many clubs is just the right amount? How much time should you devote to your work? Is it a, a, a calculus equation that needs to keep being tweaked as you get older and have more responsibilities? Um, what do you think if you want to keep it balanced? Yeah, I definitely think that was one thing, you know, that you're so unfamiliar with coming from high school is you typically went through this, you know, eight period day or, you know, however long, six hour day or eight hour day of school, of classes, you have your activities right after you go home, you eat, you know, you do all these things that are just like one after another. But the beautiful thing about college is you get to choose what you do every single day. Um, you know, I try and have flexibility every part of my, like in each part of my day, because I feel like those are the times when I've just gone 
Um, I've met up with a friend for lunch last minute and it's been a great day because I had lunch with that friend. Um, I think that balance really comes from knowing what you want to get out of your four years at BC and it's gonna look different for everyone. So I know that's not super helpful, but for me personally, what I prioritized kind of in my freshman year was looking at making sure I was getting my classes done uh, making sure I was getting, you know, help in those and seeking out help from professors, TAs, classmates, and all those things. Designating time that was just meant for me to kind of study after class because you will not be in class as often as you were in high school. Um, so kind of managing that. But um, what I really prioritized was trying to reach out to people. Obviously, it's looked different as I've gone into my later years, sophomore, junior year. Um, but so freshman year, I really tried to make my schedule flexible um, and sign up for a lot of clubs because I was just curious in so many different things. Um, so, you know, I did things like the Undergraduate Leadership Academy, which, is run, which was run through our undergraduate government. I signed up for the club running team. Um, I joined the student admissions program. So I just tried to get my foot in the door of all these different organizations. And as I've gone through, you know, my two years now, um, my brother who graduated from BC, he gives really good advice, surprisingly. And he said like, you know, in your last few years, like you get to be selfish. And I was like, what do you mean? Like what, I don't get that. He's like, you get to choose what you wanna do. And so, you know, I've spent time, um, as I realized my sophomore year, I was kind of spread too thin. And it's really hard sometimes when you become so connected to certain clubs to say no, um, because it's just weighing you down. Like I took on a job because I needed, you know, money for groceries and, you know, expenses were coming up, but kind of saying no to certain things is hard, but it's really important because it's in turn made me really happy with my schedule. Um, I wake up and I'm, I know exactly what I need to do and what I want to do as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to my senior year, kind of just focusing on places and parts of campus that I wanna be in. Um, and that's no easy task. And I'm not saying it's not possible to keep with these clubs as well, but just for me personally, it's something that, you know, I've added different roles. I, I now do research, so I had to, kind of lean off of other parts of um, my extracurriculars, but I always leave time for friends, family, myself, and obviously schoolwork is a big part. But if you're coming to BC, you'll get your schoolwork done. It's really kind of all everything else in between that is tricky to figure out, but there's plenty of resources here on campus and students that are here to support you. Thanks, Lauren, great answer. <clears throat> So, so there's two other big parts of our campus community and our, our campus life that supply us with some great traditions throughout the year. Uh, number one, and probably the one that most people identify with colleges and universities is, is athletics. Uh, Laura already talked about the red bandana game, which highlights the football team. But maybe for some of you, you know, just the, the weekly, you know, uh, women's soccer game or watching uh, baseball, the new facility, or uh, club sports, uh, or participating in intramural sports every season. Maybe that's part of your athletic uh, you know, tradition for yourself that you've enjoyed. Let's hear a little bit about uh, some of your reflections on the athletic traditions that you particularly enjoy uh, life at Boston College with. Uh, Anthony, why don't you start? Yeah, you got it. So first I'll start off with a little weird brag that we had the number one hockey team in the country this year. Um, and those are always fun games to go to when um, we were able to go there. And it's always really cool because every time that we score, kind of do a little bit of a chant, we sing for Boston. It's a great time. Um, and I think this year, too, one of the nice little things that um, my friends and I have started doing is watching the BC baseball games a lot more often. We were ranked for a few weeks. I kind of slipped out, but are making our way back in. Um, and, you know, I think but my my favorite team to watch um, is probably the hockey or the football team. Every every game day, we'd wake up to ship it up to Boston. Um, and uh, for the hockey games, we'd kind of just get ourselves ready with our, our BC sweaters, go over to the games, and um, those are always a great time. Um, and also the, the, on the Newton campus too, like Chris, you were saying, um, the, soccer, the, soccer team, the soccer teams play on the Newton campus. Um, so I've seen a couple of those. Um, another little weird brag called a t-shirt at one of those games. Um, got a little B, uh, BC soccer t-shirt that uh, my friends um, make fun of me for that I wear all the time. But um in addition to that too like uh, i think just athletics here are so big and definitely create a sense of community um because everybody wants to see their classmates do well everybody wants to see um bc kind of make the espn top 10 plays all the time 
um, which we've been actually doing pretty well with actually, especially because of women's lacrosse. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I got for that. Uh, thanks, Anthony. And Anthony, in the q and I just wanted you to look at the first question when people say, do you think that living on Newton campus was better than uh, the other campus? Uh, you've represented yourself very well. Uh, how about other athletic traditions that you have taken part in, you really enjoy, and you take some pride in? Abby, does anything come to mind when we talk about athletics in BC in terms of our traditions that you have a lot of pride in? Absolutely. Um, I can touch on a few things here. The first you brought up, which would be intramurals. I wish I could say that I had more pride in my intramural experience than I do. Um, I'm very proud to have played soccer and basketball um, here on different teams, but I didn't win any of them. But if you do win, you get a mug and I think maybe a t-shirt and it is an extreme competition um, on campus and, and people really pride themselves in getting um, an intramural mug. So hopefully next year will be the year um, that I'll, I'll win one. But my hopes are low, but it's fun nevertheless. Um, so that's definitely something that a lot of students are involved in. Um, my freshman year, again, and answering the Newton um, question, uh, we played soccer on the Newton campus. So everyone from Upper had to come to Newton to play their intramural soccer games while I could just waltz out of my dorm. So I felt really cool, cool there. But um, so intramurals are definitely huge here. Lauren was touching a little bit about club sports. So she was on the club running team. Um, I'm personally not on any club sports, but you can try out for those. I have a lot of friends on various soccer, lacrosse, um, hockey club teams as well. But I would say that Something that I have a lot of pride in would definitely be the hockey team as well. I love hockey and one tradition that we have is called the Bean Pot. Um, and it's a tournament with Boston University, Boston College, Northeastern and Harvard. And they play at TD Garden, which is where the Bruins and the Celtics play right in the North End in Boston. So it's just a really exciting um, two weeks. They're played on Monday nights. So it's really cool to see the BC community really go into the city on a Monday night when everyone has club meetings and, and school work to do, but they still want to be there to support the team and to show their BC pride and hopefully win. Um, we've never won when I've been here, but we have won in the past and and I've seen videos of, of BC winning and it's always a huge eruption um, in the BC, the BC um, fan stands, but um, yeah, that's one of my favorite traditions. My parents live close and, and they've been able to come to the bean pot too. So that's always been a really exciting time to say hello to my parents, but also um, support BC and to mix it up midweek or the beginning of the week. And, and I think that really speaks to how deeply ingrained sports are here as a chance to socialize, but also show your BC pride. And real quick, Abby, um, someone asked about tickets. Laura mentioned the gold pass. Can you just real briefly, briefly talk about tickets to on-campus uh, sporting events? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if I am correct, the Gold Pass will cover uh, men's basketball, football, and men's hockey. And you buy that at the beginning of your freshman year. And then um, they changed the system, I think my sophomore year, but they'll send you a ticket that's on your phone and you just scan that to get into the games. Um, and then typically all of our other games are free. Um, I know on the Newton campus, they're free to go to unless it's a playoff game. And then sometimes you may have to get a ticket. Um, and sometimes it's just first come first serve. Um, so you don't necessarily have to pay. It's just a matter of how many people could be at a playoff game. Um, but it's really easy to get tickets um, at BC. And then uh, we also have organizations on campus to help students get tickets who might not be able to um, financially afford for the gold pass and they're able to get tickets for each individual game. So BC really makes it accessible to the student body to be able to go to these games. Perfect, thanks Abby. <clears throat> now if Laura and Lauren can talk a little bit about th the other group of talented performers we have at Boston College, the actresses, the dancers, the singers, uh, you know, there is a lot of, there are a lot of people that are great performers um, on stage. Uh, on film. Um, there are some great traditions that are involved in that. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about uh, things that you've, you've attended or how well these things are supported and what are the big time moments for those performers on our campus in a, in a given year? Uh, Laura, why don't you go first? Yeah, awesome. So I know Lauren touched on this earlier. Um, the undergraduate government of Boston College has 
a committee under that known as ALC, the AHANA Leadership Committee, AHANA being our students of color, so Asian American, Hispanic, African American, Native American students. And so every year they put on an event in the spring known as ALC Showdown. And it is a dance competition between all the dance groups on campus. You'd be surprised, I was surprised about how many dance groups we have, um, ranging over like hip hop, ballet, there's also culture groups. So the way that Showdown is structured, it's in Conti Forum, which is where our basketball and hockey teams play. It's completely packed, um, obviously, during normal times um, of just students coming to support the arts. And so I think we talk a lot about athletics and you see the support there, but it's really refreshing to see that same support come out for the arts on campus, especially for these dance groups. And so they compete. Um, there's usually a culture winner and then just the overall winner and they get to choose what charity they want to donate all the money from the ticket sales to which i think is another great opportunity for us to show like our experience with the greater bc community and support organizations that might have a strong tie to what that dance group represents um so yeah i think that's like one of the the main events that really sticks out in my head just because conti forum really does fill up completely and last year actually just a little anecdote was um showdown was supposed to be after we were actually sent home for covid so the the day I think the day after they had released that we were going to be sent home, um, all the dance groups made their own impromptu showdown. So we have this like little green space outside one of the dorms on lower campus and all the dance groups came out, all the students came out to support them. I could see it from my dorm and when it started forming and it was just a ton of people out there showing their support for students that we knew we were, were we weren't going to have the opportunity to do so in a normal setting so um just seeing that all come together so quickly just really shows how well students tend to support other students on campus perfect thanks laura uh, lauren do you have anything to add to that yeah um so i'm really fortunate um i've been able to go to a lot of different uh performing arts um performances or you know musical theater um i actually have two friends um one of who's on the irish dance team at bc so every year we've looked forward to her shows um and especially at showdown and then another a friend of mine because i am not musically talented at all i wish i was um but she's really into theater she's a great singer great performer and so i've gone to every single one of her performances my friends and i kind of make it a tradition to buy tickets on the same night and just like scream her name um, whenever she comes on so um it's really nice we have many options um from what i've at least heard from her is in your freshman year and sophomore year you can kind of do more casual plays um and she performed like high school musical and she was Mrs. Darvis. So, you know, just a quick Tuesday night um, theater performance. She's been in different ones such as like smaller plays, also big musicals that happen in the spring. So in a normal year, she's this is like her busiest season. She's at rehearsals for so long um, and working on it. And so I know we have a great theater department that is really supportive. Um, just some other events that take place is we have um, Arts Fest, um, which is where a lot of different, you know, artists come, they display whether you paint or you draw, they'll have displays on canvases around, um, and then there will be performers as well. Um, we have a lot of acapella groups as well. I was giving a tour this past week and we were passing by the all male um, acapella group, which is the Heitzman, and they were all dressed in suits. And the parents were like, what is going on? I was like, it's our acapella group. And they're like, we could have guessed because then they ended up singing right when we were passing by. Um, so it's just, you know, things like that, that are other opportunities for students to get involved and continue their passions um, that they had in the performing arts part of um, BC. I know it's a good community. And even if, you know, what we have at BC, um, you want more? Well, we have the city of Boston, you know, just six miles away um, with other universities um, that we can kind of collaborate and have, um, you know, I don't know what's the right word for it, but like battles with acapella battles. That's kind of what I'm imagining um, or dance um, concerts and things like that. Well, let's pick up on that, Lauren, in the sense that you know, Boston is the source of a lot of great traditions. You know, I always take my family to a Red Sox game 
you know, every fall and we try to get in to see, you know, um, the gardening museum every time there's a big new exhibit getting in there. So let's talk, I, I mean, is Boston incorporated into, like, do you make it a regular thing to go into the city? Do you go in at certain times of the year, like, you know, Christmas time to go find some, you know, shopping, you know, treasure that you wouldn't get any place else or at the beginning of the school year when every restaurant has college night for, for uh, college students that are hitting town. Abby, uh, how much does Boston come into your routine yearly, monthly, even weekly as a, as a BC student? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely think that I've utilized the city of Boston quite a lot, um, especially as I've gotten older and spent um, like more time at BC, I've gone into the city a lot more. Um, but a few things that I can touch on, like I've gone to a few Red Sox games because they have great $9 student tickets um, that you can sign up for that and they'll text you and say there are tickets tonight and you can make a spur of the moment decision and, and go into the city and, and see a game, which has always been really fun. Um, my friends and I love to go into like the public garden and Boston Common, especially around Christmas time for their tree lightings. Uh, you can also go ice skating, I believe in the common. Um, and we love like trying out new restaurants or just walking around the city. Um, but some things have actually been sponsored by BC or by a lot of my classes. So when I was a freshman, we did this thing called Discover Boston where there were two upperclassmen like guides and you were just in a group of um, first year students and you were just in Boston for maybe four hours and they had a specific spot that they wanted to take you and we all got tea cards and, and which is our public transportation here. Um, and we hopped on the tea and got into Boston and just explored with other, with other freshmen and these upperclassmen, which was super fun. I've also gone into Boston to see like various um, museum exhibits or um, like performances for some of my classes. I was in, uh, it's a very niche course. I was in neuroscience and theater. So that course went into the city a lot to see different um, like theater performances, but then we also went to the Museum of Science. Uh, a lot of my organizations as well have done like, I don't wanna call them like, um, like field trips, but kind of field trips into the city as well as a group. So I would say that BC, or Boston, Boston is very accessible to BC students, um, not just because it's right there, but it's because of BC students really want to go into the city and want to go explore. Um, but it's also very nice to have the campus here as well. So I would say for me, it's it's the perfect distance. It's not too far. It's um, You can Uber in, you could drive in, but I like to take the T. Um, it's less expensive and, and honestly kind of fun to go into the city sometimes on the T and it's right there. And I think um, I see people all around me going into the city all the time. Uh, well, as we start to wind this conversation down, I'm going to ask the panelists, if you could, if you could put your email address in your little camera box uh, so we can keep the conversation going when our time is up. And, you know, some of you talked about living on Newton or being in on the club running team or being from Maine. And maybe that is something that you want to keep that conversation going about. I, I want to make sure that people might be interested in doing that. Uh, that would be fantastic. Um, you know, there, there are some uh, just natural traditions that happen throughout the year because of the, the time of year it is. For example, one of my favorite things at Boston College is the tree lighting. So it's usually like December 2nd or 3rd. It's usually a little bit colder than you want it to be. And it's about twilight where we all gather, a lot of us gather in O'Neill Plaza for the lighting of a tree and some acapella music and it's sort of in and, and you know some hot chocolate and it's a way I, I think I don't want to speak for you guys but I'll tell you what it means to me it catches us all off guard a little bit because it happens right before finals are starting I think everyone just came back from Thanksgiving and kind of feels like like we're we're people rather than students and faculty members we're gathering together we enjoy each other's company enjoy a little hot chocolate and really appreciate the, the place that we have with each other. I'm sure there are moments through the school year that you stop and appreciate that. Maybe the first day that you're back from the summer and you see all your friends at once coming around um, and you give them that, you know, fist pump or in other times, hugs and handshakes for and not seeing them for the summer. 
Is there anything else that's kind of a sneaky tradition that comes to mind that just happens at a certain time of year that you really have come to appreciate um, because you know the calendar and you know what the life is like at Boston College? Things like, like that that I mentioned, if any of you have something like that. I could sit off with uh, with this one. I would say the first snowfall for me. Um, it's just always everybody's always outside. If it's if it's big enough, it's everybody's outside sledding. If it's not that big, everybody's just taking a walk, enjoying it. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do. Also, when during the first snowfall, I just walk down Linden Lane, um, see all the trees covered, see Gasson beautifully covered uh, with a little white coat, and um, you just kind of take your pictures. Um, and especially if it's during the Christmas season, they have a beautiful nativity outside of Babs Library, and seeing that covered in snow also. Um, is quite amazing. Um, and even just walking around the entire campus, you you always see like a group of friends just like taking silly photo, photos outside of Fulton or wherever it may be. Um, and then there's always the the sleigh riding at the end of the day. We have a ton of hills on campus, which are a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun, sometimes dangerous to um, to go sleigh riding on. Um, you got to pick and choose which ones are the safer ones. That That's what we've done. Um, and that's that's probably been, um, you know, probably the, the sneaky, the sneakiest like nicest day for me in addition i know lauren also mentioned like the first nice day um but that you know the polar opposite literally polar opposite huh um being the first snowfall is probably that for me i can jump in really quickly just because it just recently happened and i might butcher the name because maybe they aren't these types of trees but the cherry blossoms are they cherry blossoms on campus? Okay, that's what I thought. Um, outside Gasson, which is a really pretty building on campus, I definitely encourage you, if you've never been to BC, to look it up. It's so beautiful. Um, we have some cherry blossom trees, and they just recently bloomed. And what I love about them is their location is like, I like to study at O'Neill Library, which is right on the other side of Gasson. And so after a late night of studying, it happened the other day. I walked outside and I was like, the first thing I saw was Gasson all lit up um, with the cherry blossoms in front of it. And I think it's just like, for me, especially now as a senior, it's celebrating the, the beginning of the end. We only have a little bit of time left here. And so that kind of just shows that we need to come together during these last few weeks um, and really celebrate all the beauty that we have on campus that normally I don't always stop to appreciate. But that is one thing, no matter what, during my four years, I always stop and say, wow, like BC really does have a very beautiful campus. Well, you kind of brought me to the last tradition, Laura. And it was just announced today that there will be a, an in-person commencement. Um, and we're excited about that. And I know details are still yet to follow, but um, that's the last tradition that you'll deal with with us. Um, your thoughts about graduating. Have you started to get, like you said, um, sentimental? Has it started to sink in yet? And um, uh, while we don't have all the details yet, is it, is it something that you're really, really looking forward to? I mean, yeah, I, I get this from my mom. I'm very much a crier. So I have already, anytime I think about graduation, I get emotional, especially just because I've been so grateful to be here this year. You know, for the longest time, a lot of us seniors had no idea what this year was going to look like. And I think having that unknown really made us all grow together as a class and think, you know, like we have a year to make this, to make the most of it. And I think we really have. And so, um, I, as much as I'm sad to be leaving BC, I know that I'm ready to go. I know that BC has provided me everything that it can over the past four years um, to go out into the world and set the world aflame to be corny. Um, but I think too, just what I'm really looking forward to, especially now knowing that we're gonna have an in-person commencement is just spending this time with my friends here. Um, we have graduation pictures planned for the beginning of May in our caps and gowns. Um, and I, I think just that's part of the thing of not getting emotional is realizing that we do have some time left to spend with one another and to really appreciate it while we have it. And so I'm really excited for these next few weeks. And I know that BC is really gonna try and make it to make the most of it with what they can do um, to make this special for the, the seniors. Well, I think that's a good place to stop uh, before you start to cry, Laura. Thank you. Uh, 
boy, you guys really illustrated what life is like here in terms of these stories and these um, connections to traditions, to moments that have been important to you and to remind students that all these things will be happening as they continue to grow intellectually and as they grow spiritually and as they're making friends, they're gonna take part in a lot of these elements of life. We didn't get to all your questions. Please reach out to our panelists. Um, they're helpful. They're very helpful. Look at, they volunteered an hour of their time to talk to you uh, remotely. They could answer an email if you had an email about one part, part of life at BC or another. Um, you know, it's April 13th. You still have 17 or 18 days to make the biggest decision of your life. They're happy to answer an email if that helps. I am too. I didn't put my uh, email address in the camera box. I don't, I don't know how to do that, but um, I'm, if you can find me through the website. I could certainly answer any questions you might have. Uh, so panels did a great job. Those of you that, that tuned in, thanks for joining us uh, tomorrow night. Another SAP panel uh, uh, talking about the Canal School of Nursing. And then we have a couple more left in the month of April where we'll talk about spirituality and retreats and service. We'll also talk about um, clubs and organizations. So we still have a couple more left. All these to try to help you with your big decision. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your interest in BC. Have a good night. And good night, uh, panel. You did a great job. Thanks so much.